substantive give and take and worthwhile for any audience to see. However, out of the 45 minute sit down, well, here is all that CBS Sunday Morning decided to air. Take a look. Honestly, I think liberalism has to be defeated. Socialism must be defeated in a political sense. This is not a, we, we don't want a revolution in well, this what, country. What oh. more do you want? You got the White House, you got the House, we you got the now. Senate. Okay. And then we have angry snowflakes, and then we've got a democratic estab establishment. I say the press in this country is out to destroy this president. We have to give some credit to the American people that they're somewhat intelligent and that they know the difference between an opinion show and a news show. Yeah. You're, not, you're cynical. Look at that. Yeah. I am cynical because, uh, you know. You think we're bad for America? You think yeah. I'm bad for America? Yeah. You do? In the, in the long haul, I think you really? and all these opinions. That's shows, sad, Ted. No, you know why? That's sad. Because you're very good at what you do and because you have, you have attracted a significantly you more influential. The well, let me finish the sentence. Let me finish the sentence I'm before listening. you do that. With all due respect, you, yes, Take you have point. you have attracted people who are determined that ideology is more important than facts. Wow, it's kind of calling me a liar. And then he's saying, "Well, you and all these opinion shows." He's giving his opinion. Only 70 seconds. That's it. Ended up airing. Now, I guess people like Ted Koppel feel you, the American people, can't distinguish between opinion and news. That's kind of like Obama. Remember, he said people clinging to their God, guns, and religion, or Hillary Clinton, who said ignorant, irredeemable, deplorables. Now, beyond this interview being a total waste of my time, it is a flagrant example of what I call edited fake news. Now, remember, CBS News is the former home of Dan Rather. Remember, he was forced to resign after reporting an inflammatory fake news story about President George W. Bush, rather used fake documents to bolster his story. Now, CBS News is also the former home of Cheryl Atkinson. Remember, she there was marginalized at CBS and stonewalled, and they wouldn't show a lot of our investigative journalism into President Obama and his administration. Is that agenda driven? And now they produce a package taking shots at me, all while prominently displaying their dishonesty, their bias and total hypocrisy here for every viewer to see. Now, Ted's interview with me, it wasn't about substance. It wasn't about getting my real opinion. Now, the story was written long before he walked into this studio here at Fox. I was just used as a prop to advance his narrative, which is why only one minute and 10 seconds out of the 45 to 50 minutes was actually used. In other words, it was one minute and that's the one minute that fit into their narrative. That is edited fake news. By the way, other networks, they play the same game and they have for many years. And now it's time to expose this for what it really is. And I have the ability to fight back. Cheap shot attacks in the name of, quote, journalism, all to advance their biased agenda. Now, what Ted was really asking is this. Are opinion shows bad for America? He thinks they are. Meanwhile, Ted was giving his opinion. He considers himself an impartial journalist, yet in what CBS News was airing, he's doing exactly what he said is bad for America. Now, right here on this show, on Hannity, I express my opinion because I am a talk show host, an advocacy journalist, if you will. Ted Koppel, he thinks he's down the middle, fair and balanced, a real journalist. Ted, you show in this clip you are not a journalist. You're very hypocritical here. Now, have you ever said, for example, you work for CBS, Dan Rather worked for CBS? Ted, did you ever say that George W. Bush, the attack by Dan Rather was bad for America? Did you ever say CBS, when they spiked Cheryl Atkinson's story, that that's bad for America? Did you ever wonder if the stories were spiked because the head of CBS News and that division, David Rhodes, happens to be the brother of Ben Rhodes, the high-ranking official for then-President Obama? Is that a conflict of interest? Now, I'm willing to look at my body of work and compare it with CBS News any day of the week. Did CBS News even one time ever ask President Obama about his relationship with an unrepentant terrorist where he started his political career. Well, I did CBS's job. I did it for you, Ted. Did you ever delve deep into what black liberation theology is and how it motivated President Obama, then candidate Obama for over 20 years, the Church of Reverend Wright, the Church of GD America, the Church of America's chickens have come home to roost? Now, eight, eight, after eight years of Obama, did CBS ever show the numbers on the screen there about what a failure the Obama presidency was? Now, you know what? I put those up on the screen on a regular basis. And by the way, Ted, 
I did mention this to you in the interview. All of these facts were given to you, but you edited it all out. Did CBS ever put up all the laws that Hillary Clinton likely violated with her email server scandal so she could avoid congressional oversight? Did CBS ever expose all the Benghazi lies of Hillary Clinton? We did on this program. Did CBS ever cover in great detail how members of the media colluded with the Clinton campaign in this election cycle? We did here. How much time did CBS devote to this phony Russian conspiracy story, even though after eight months there isn't a shred of evidence? Now, that's the difference, Ted, between me and you. I'm honest with my audience. I don't pretend that I'm fair and balanced and objective. You do. And if you really cared about truth in journalism, how can you work for a network that only tells one side of the story? You know, how can I be bad for America when I'm offering the American people news and information nightly that your own network will not touch because they have an agenda? Now, Ted, I happen to be very proud of the work I do both on radio and TV. I'm proud of the teams that we have built here that work really hard every day to bring this audience news and information that, well, frankly, the rest of the media ignores. So I hope you enjoyed your press coverage this weekend and covering how bad I am for America while editing out 99% of what I said. But what you really did is prove my point, that I'm right. You exposed yourself as agenda-driven, opinionated, hypocritical, and you proved my point, I've been saying since 2007 and 8, journalism is dead in America, and we have an information crisis in this country. Now, Ted, if you and CBS and CBS News have the courage, release the entire unedited footage of the interview. Let America decide. Let America see the 99% that you didn't want to air. Joining us now with reaction, Michelle Malkin <laughs> investigates on CRTV. Michelle Malkin, I'll tell you why they're not going to release the tape, Michelle. Because, so, Ted asked the first question. I give the answer, and he goes, none of that is going to air. That's what he says. I said, well, why am I sitting <laughs> Is that here? Is your Ted Koppel imitation? It's good. And, and, then, and then throughout the rest of the interview, I'm like provoking him. Ted, you, re Ted, you really need to include this part. You, you know, I'm like, are you going to cut this out, Ted? Are you going to cut this out, Ted? Are you going to cut this out? Who does an interview and says, that's not airing? We're not going to air any of that. Well, then why am I here? So that's why they don't want people to see this fake what, what these networks do in edit rooms, they've gotten away with for years. That's my point. I want to get yours. Yes, and I have to raise a toast to you, big brother, for uh, exposing these walking dead liberal media decrepit elitists. I think it was definitely worth your time uh, to do this interview because although they, they played just a one little sliver, uh, look at what you've been able to expose. Uh, and, and I think that it has them running scared. I would love to see the Twitter hashtag, release the Hannity tape, um, <laughs> put some more pressure on these people and I know you've got a huge Twitter army out there and I do as well this is a, a very teachable moment in liberal media history because you have this ancient gatekeeper Ted Koppel telling you wagging your finger that you Sean Hannity are bad for America while he Ted Koppel and all of his fourth estate colleagues are the ones who can only be entrusted with delivering uh, the proper amount of news and opinion to you know, America. We're the ones who support diversity, true diversity in the media marketplace. These people are the enemies of diversity of thought. These people the, are the enemies of true transparency and a vibrant marketplace in the media. Shame you know, on Because they had a monopoly all these years. And by the way, this is not personal between Ted Koppel. I actually did it because right. I grew up, I loved when he was covering on Nightline, America held hostage for 444 days. I don't think I missed an episode because I thought it was really imperative, important work. And then when those hostages were released, it was such a good moment for our country. And so it's not personal. The thing is, there's a level of sanctimony here that it's, it reminds me of Obama clinging to God, guns, religion. It reminds me of irredeemable deplorables, that the American people are not smart enough to ascertain what is opinion and what is news. I don't think most Americans doubt that I am a conservative. Uh, I think I make it clear on a nightly basis. Is there any shock there? <laughs> of 
course not. Um, the other thing, of course, that you've done, though, is expose the double standards, because here, here you are asking them to release the full interview so that people can judge the totality of the interview and the substance of what you said. These are the same media types who, if conservative, investigative, independent journalists use their tactics, use their techniques that they are uh, supposedly uh, time-honored and entrusted uh, to be able to, to, to be able to use in telling a story, for example, editing an interview, they hate it. They're, we, you, we want you, the conservative journalists, like James O'Keefe, for example. They're always, they are always demanding that he release every last second of what he's done because he can't be trusted, but they can? Come on, look at the whole entire history of liberal media ideology being more important than facts, uh, to, to, to borrow Ted Koppel's phrase. You already mentioned Dan Rather and Rathergate, manufactured documents in pursuit of an ideological agenda, bringing George W. Bush down. The entire Trump campaign I want to hear him of say liberal Dan media Dan Rather's laws. bad for America. Is he ever gonna, <laughs> yeah, that's you think right. those words ever come flying out of his mouth? I doubt it. All right, thank you. And up next tonight, right here on Hannity. We can't be chasing the perfect all the time. I mean, sometimes you have to take the good and put it in your pocket and take the win. All right, White House Chief of Staff Reince Priebus reacting to the Republican health care bill being pulled on Friday. Up next, we got reaction from Corey Lewandowski and Geraldo Rivera. Also tonight, Sheriff David Clark, Larry Elder, they weigh in on the Trump team being surveilled, likely illegally. Also, Ann Coulter and our delve into, yes, the dangers of spring break. That's back tonight. can't be chasing the perfect all the time. I mean, sometimes you have to take the good and put it in your pocket and take the win. The president met with over 120 members of the House. Uh, there was more love shown to outside groups by this White House, whether it was Vice President Pence, Mick Mulvaney, Tom Price, Steve Bannon, myself, Mark okay. Short. I mean, the point is the diverse group of people working the halls of Congress, including the leadership in Congress, um, I think it's time for uh, for our folks to come together. And I also think it's time to potentially get a few moderate Democrats on board as well. All right, that was White House Chief of Staff Reince Priebus yesterday reacting to the Republican health care bill that was pulled late last week. Over the weekend, the president tweeted, quote, Democrats are smiling in D.C. that the Freedom Caucus, with the help of Club for Growth and Heritage, have saved Planned Parenthood and Obamacare. Okay, joining us with reaction, former Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski and Fox News correspondent at large Geraldo Rivera. Um, Geraldo, first of all, I think this is going to get done. That's my strong belief here. The second thing is, I, I, have, I just see, have a different take than the White House at this point. And that is, and, and there's plenty of blame to go around. Nobody, not one person, Geraldo, saw that bill that was being scored in the CBO until they released it. There was no consensus bill that everybody supported. You have different factions in the Republican and Democratic Party. You got moderates, you got the Tuesday group, the Sunday group, the Wednesday group, the, you know, the study group, the Freedom Caucus. These groups didn't see it beforehand. And then right after it's released, it started, they started fighting each other on TV. This should have been built behind the scenes. They had eight long years to do it, Geraldo. I blame the leadership I, I on agree. a bad rollout here. I agree, here. Sean. Okay, I agree with that last point. They had eight years. Uh, damn it, they should have gotten this You're done. Right. But you are the most prominent conservative commentator in our country, Sean. Oh boy, come and on. And you have to, you have no, you have to cop to the fact that this so-called Freedom Caucus, they have, they have a three-word slogan: just say no. They were not going to go along with this president, no matter what this bill contained. They stabbed him in the back. Uh, they had a chance here where the, uh, where the, uh, Geraldo, uh, the let me Republican, say this. the Republican. Speaker of the House and, and everybody uh, in the Trump administration, the President of the United States, invested in a compromise that was going to save the uh, federal deficit to the tune of a quarter of a trillion dollars over time. Uh, they, they were fighting uh, for those who had cut off, uh, you know, the Obamacare uh, 24 million, but still they were saving money. They had a reasonable compromise. The Freedom Caucus would not have All gone right, along Geraldo, with anything nobody, that it Rice is right. People. No bill's going to be perfect. Nobody gets everything they want. But I, I, I'll, I'll say this to you, and I'll bring Corey in here as well. Had they built the consensus, Corey, 
before they rolled out the bill, they would have known the votes that they had. And as hard as, and by the way, the president gets all the credit. He did compromise. He tried to, you know, he'd do something for the Freedom Caucus, then the moderates would leave. Then the, he'd do something for the moderates, the Freedom Caucus would leave. This should have been handled by the speaker. This should have been handled by leadership. The president did way too much heavy lifting on this bill. He's the executive branch. They're the legislative branch. Corey. Sean, the House leadership f failed to get this bill done, and they should have never had an artificial deadline to get this bill accomplished when it wasn't necessary to be done in the first 60 days. And I understand the budget reconciliation process, but I also understand that they could, they were, you know, they were concerned what the Senate was going to do before they get the House bill done. What should have been done is behind the scenes, as you've mentioned, you bring members in from the House Freedom Caucus, the Tuesday Group, the Republican Study Committee, the Heritage Foundation, all of the stakeholders who are going to look at this bill before it's released, compromise behind the scenes. There's always going to be additional compromise needed, but if you can have a base framework behind the scenes before the bill is introduced to everybody, then that's the way to go. Look, you can take Marco Rubio for his word or not. When it came to the Gang of Eight, he spent countless hours going around and talking about his legislation before it was ever introduced. Now, the bill was ultimately a failure, but he did the right thing by trying to get those groups on board Listen, first we, so we can get them get support. Done. I, I am convinced, but I, Geraldo, all I'm saying is, you know, why did you set, why did they set themselves up by keeping it hidden, not sharing it with any of the coalition, releasing it, creating a public civil war and a public fight, when it should have been handled behind closed doors, those compromises could have been made, and I suggest probably this is the way it'll happen from here on in. Look, you cannot blame people if they have strong principles. Nobody wants this repeal and replace more than I do. I want the win for the president. He worked hard for this, and he'll get it, but I just think I, I just you gotta hand, you gotta have the leadership handle it better. I absolutely disagree, Sean. I think that the Freedom Shocking. Caucus would not have gone along with any would not have gone along with any compromise whatsoever that involved giving something for free to poor people. They are the they are the yeah, just it, say it, no ridiculous. caucus. They when have you see a Freedom Caucus of... member, like what? What has the Freedom Caucus done but said no? They voted 50 times to repeal or more. It's to meaningless repeal if you don't pass it. And then eight years That's eight right. years later, where are they now? Just now they they have to say no to a Republican president. I am what do you think John this Boehner be, quit? Uh, these Sean people Hannity are saying this. Bring, uh, Corey is right. Bring in all of these conservative think tanks. Bring in the Senate because you have to deal with cloture and the bird rule and, and reconciliation. Bring in all of the different factions with the moderates and the Tuesday group, the study group, the caucus. Everybody needs to get locked in a room and don't let them out till they fix it. They owe it to the American people to fulfill that promise, and frankly, they owe it to the president to do their job. All right, coming up, Sheriff David Clark, Larry Elder, they're up next to weigh in on the Trump campaign being surveilled, and also later tonight. The American people are not happy with these results. They know that when cities and states refuse to help enforce immigration laws, our nation is less safe. Finally, the Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, calling out cities to enforce the immigration law. In other words, sanctuary cities. And Col Coulter will join us tonight with a reaction. And, well, still to come tonight, we went down to South Padre Island, Texas. More shocking behavior. Is this dangerous for your children? Spring break. We'll check in with Ainsley Earhart. She has reactions. Straight ahead. Live from America's News Headquarters in New York, I'm Kelly Wright. Here's what's happening. Democrats calling on House Intelligence Committee Chair Devin Nunez to recuse himself from the committee's Russia inquiry. They're upset that Nunez, who received intelligence from a source on White House grounds, told President Trump about it before sharing it with committee members. Nunez claims he did nothing wrong, but Democrats say it makes them question his ability to run an independent investigation. President Trump himself is firing back this evening, tweeting, quote, why isn't the House Intelligence Committee looking into the Bill and Hillary deal that allowed big uranium to go to Russia? Russian speech, money to Bill, the Hillary Russian reset, praise of Russia by Hillary, or Podesta Russian company. Trump Russia story is a hoax. And that's a look at news this hour. I'm Kelly Wright. Now back to Hannity. Welcome back to Hannity. So yesterday, Congressman Trey Gowdy called out Democrats for criticizing the House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunez for briefing President Trump about his findings related to the Obama administration's collecting intel on the Trump transition team. In other words, surveillance. Take a look. 
My understanding is Chairman Nunes briefed the commander in chief on matters unrelated to the Russia investigation. So if if that's a big deal in Washington, then we've we've sunk to a, to a, to a new low. So if the commander in chief cannot be briefed by the chairperson of the House Intel Committee on a matter that has nothing to do with the FBI investigation, then I don't know what they can talk about, John. All right. So here's He's the, the commander in chief. And that's not all. Today, the Democrats, they were up in arms because it was revealed that Chairman Nunez met with his source on the White House grounds, but in a statement. For a spokesman, for Chairman Nunez, they explained, quote, Chairman Nunez met with his source at the White House grounds in order to have proximity to a secure location where he could view the information provided by the source. Makes sense. Joining us now with Reaction, the author of the best-selling book, Cop Under Fire, Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark, and Salem nationally syndicated radio talk show host Larry Elder. Larry, as, uh, let, me, let me check in with your legal mind for a second. Can you think of any circumstances under which a president-elect or a candidate should ever be surveilled? Uh, I can't think of anyone, and uh, I think that uh, uh, what we're finding out is that Donald Trump was not out to lunch when he uh, tweeted that he might have been wiretapped, using the term very broadly. I'd be a lot more impressed with some of these Democrats yelling and screaming about Devin Nunez if they were uh, saying that Loretta Lynch should have recused herself when she met with Bill uh, Clinton on the tarmac, something that she never did. I'd be a little more impressed if they were angry at Hillary for not turning over documents during the Benghazi hearing uh, and for giving us a bunch of different stories uh, and for uh, deleting documents, destroying evidence after they were under, under subpoena. I'd be a lot more impressed if the Democrats were upset with those kinds of things, but they're not. This is nothing more than politics. They're being hypocritical. They know that they're in trouble because Donald Trump is looking at, at least credible, and so therefore, let's put the chairman on trial. That's what they do. That's what they're doing right now. You know, one of the things I think that bothered me the, the most is, is the chairman saying, Sheriff, that this was widely disseminated. In other words, a lot of people saw this. Now, that goes into the issue of, of privacy, even if it was legitimate surveillance, and I think that is a, an, a question that needs to be answered. Let's say it was legitimate surveillance, and you get pick up a president-elect or a candidate. That should not, never be widely disseminated, right? Right. It's not. Uh, look, this is unprecedented, especially for an incoming president. Um, the fact that Nunez went and, and briefed uh, President Trump on this, that's the, what he should have done. I think the mistake he made, though, was uh, releasing this to the public. He wanted a few headlines. He wanted some face time with the media out of it. And it, that, that part of it kind of backfired on it. But I think a bigger issue here, as Larry indicated, is why the intelligence sources, the intelligence agencies, agencies are surveilling surveilling the incoming president and his transition team for what and it's i think it's a shame that the uh, intelligence agency directors there couldn't go to the president-elect and tell him what was going on maybe somebody should have leaked it to him yeah. uh, without leaking any any information or any names and just say hey there's something going on here that i think is illegal but this is as larry indicated this is the politics as, as usual that goes on in washington the partisan back and forth that the american people are tired of we said donald trump to washington to drain the swamp and to get rid of this back and forth stuff for politics that does nothing for the American people and get down to the business of serving the American people on the issues facing this country. You know, my, I have a lot of questions here, Larry. Under, did they use under the guise of legitimate intelligence gathering, legitimate surveillance, was that a ruse to really surveil the president? And the next question, logical question after that is who knew what, where, and when? And did the president know at the time, then President Obama, was any of this shared with the Clinton campaign? You know, where are these leaks coming from? The only felonies we know in this case were committed by leaking intelligence. That's a violation of the Espionage Act. So don't, and Comey wouldn't even acknowledge that there's an investigation into this, although he did acknowledge the investigation into, quote, Russia, even though there's no evidence that it's been put forward whatsoever. Well, well, that's right. Uh, I think it was Ryan Priebus who says there's greater evidence of media collusion to get Hillary elected than Trump collusion with the Russians to get Trump elected. And there's a whole lot we don't know. This invest these investigations are just now getting started. And so I would urge all people to relax. Let's get the evidence that, that will come in and find out. James Clapper, the National Intelligence Director under Obama, says so far there's no evidence whatsoever of any kind of collusion uh, with Donald Trump and with Russia. And that ultimately is what I think is going to happen. We're not going to find any kind of evidence of 
collusion. Yeah, and, and Sheriff, as if you were doing an investigation, don't you keep that circle tight in terms of evidence that you're gathering? Isn't that the type of thing you would never let out? And, and if it was let out, you would be able to very quickly determine who did it? The secrecy of these investigations is paramount. Uh, I get briefed on these things all the time, Sean, but you know, you're not going to find Barack Obama's fingerprints on this, but he's all over this. He's not stupid enough to have ordered or directed or to have been involved in any of the conversation. Might not be able to prove this, but he knew what was going on. I'll tell you what, I'll put myself in his position. If something like this was going on in Milwaukee County, in my agency, some high level investigation, and somebody didn't tell me about it, I wouldn't be real happy about it. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of those things that we'll never get be able to work this thing back toward the president, the former president, but he's all over this thing. I agree with that analysis. And you never know, maybe somebody will talk. All right, all right, guys, thank you both. Up next tonight, right here on Hannity. The American people are not happy with these results. They know that when cities and states refuse to help enforce immigration laws, our nation is less safe. The Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, speaking about the need for sanctuary cities to abide by federal laws. Ann Coulter weighs in. That's coming up next. I was in jail because I got in a beach brawl and I got too damn drunk. And later, a Hannity investigation as we went down to South Padre Island in Texas to expose what's really going on with your kids at spring break. Fox and Friends co-host Ainsley Earhart will join us with a full report about the dangers your kids are facing. All right, welcome back to Hannity. So earlier today during the White House press briefing, U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions addressed sanctuary cities and the harm they have caused the country. Let's watch this. The Department of Justice has a duty to enforce our nation's laws, including our immigration laws. Those laws require us to promptly remove aliens when they are convicted or detained of certain crimes. Unfortunately, some states and cities have adopted policies designed to frustrate this enforcement of immigration laws. This includes refusing to detain known felons on the federal detainer request or otherwise failing to comply with with these laws. The American people are not happy with these results. They know that when cities and states refuse to help enforce immigration laws, our nation is less safe. Here with Reaction, the author of the bestseller In Trump We Trust, E. Pluribus Awesome, Ann Coulter. Why do I bet you don't care about the health care repeal and replace issue? You want immigration vetting of refugees. That's those are your top issues, and you think that is should be the number one priority now. Well, I did care about Obamacare light, and I think it's a complete disaster. I have a very simple plan to fix it, which I will be launching in my column on Wednesday. So simple, even a Republican congressman could understand. It's very easy to fix. I don't really hold um, Trump responsible for that. I do want Trump and these Republicans in Congress to enforce the Trump agenda. Instead, we're getting an awful lot of the standard GOP corporatist agenda. Um, I mean, for example, this claim that they're going to they're going to go to tax cuts next well um, and particularly the corporate tax rate look as you know um, I would like taxes cut um, as you know I'm very pro-life I'm about at the point that I want taxes to go up and Planned Parenthood funded if this is all the Republicans are giving this uh, giving us as I recall under Bush tax cuts we had massive tax cuts um, corporations you know they they were happy and yet what did they turn around and do they hired guest workers Workers. They didn't hire Americans. They insisted on hire illegal aliens. So I'm not sure this argument that cutting the taxes on corporations, oh, it'll lead to all these jobs. What leads to jobs is limiting the, the supply of labor by deporting illegal aliens, by building a wall. Whoa, you want an infrastructure project. It reduces the number of welfare cases. It helps you with Medicaid and Medicare. Doing what Trump said on immigration makes everything else we have to do so so much easier. Listen, you don't want illegal immigrants competing for jobs, especially when you have 95 million Americans out of the labor force, but you, you can't deny if you bring in trillions of repatriated money at a low rate, that's going to 
incentivize them to spend money to build factor, factories, manufacturing centers, and the same with corporate taxes. You lower it to 15 percent, you go from the highest corporate tax rates in the industrialized world to the lowest. Businesses are going to want to do business here. That only helps us too, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm not very inclined to worry about about um, corporate America right now. That's all anybody has worried about. Um, the whole point of Trump was no, to care about, about the, the jobs working they class. And as I say, well, yeah, all those jobs they created under Bush. No, they didn't. They brought in guest workers. They demanded an amnesty. But you got to secure the border simultaneously. I agree with you. We're not disagreeing. Not simultaneously. Number one, and I would also say that having seen um, that we're going to be living under, in fact, we're going to live under fascism under Trump. It's the fascism of our federal district court judges. Um, immigration is obviously the federal responsibility, um, but some district court judges don't understand that. And as long as they're going to be deciding all of our immigration policy for us, I think the first law Congress ought to pass is just take, take Trump's immigration policy paper and pass every provision into law. As I've said before, Trump is very clever about this. Almost everything he's promised on immigration already is the law. It is 100 percent within so the prerogative of the president. So why does he have to go back and do it again? President. Why would you advise him to because, do it again? Because um, everything he wants to do is, is, is his responsibility as the president. For example, to build the wall. He's the commander in chief. I mean, it's not just the law. It's the Constitution that gives the president the authority to protect our borders. But apparently some federal district judges need more than the Constitution. They will ignore the Constitution. Um, why not have Congress, for one thing, just for supplemental, supplemental support on all of Trump's immigration policies, pass, pass every, all of his immigration policies into law, um, and also force the Democrats and some of those weak-kneed Republicans to vote against it. I keep hearing from, I guess, what, uh, what Reince Priebus said this weekend, that, that the new White House plan is, is to appeal to Democrats and reach out to Democrats. That. And look, Trump, Trump is a charming person. I'm sure he will be lovely to them. But I think instead of trying to get Democrat votes by giving in to them yeah. by by pushing socialist ideas the way you get democrats to vote for your bills is by writing bills that they can't vote against because they have to stand for re-election as you will see with my That's obamacare fix this this wednesday all right ann coulter thank you uh they want to destroy trump they don't want to support him the democrats all right thank you for being with us and up next tonight right here on hannity i don't remember the last three days because i've been so all right, that time again, spring break is here, and we went to South Padre Island, Texas, to see what your kids are doing on spring break. Things haven't changed. You won't believe what we saw. Ainsley Earhart joins us with a full report. That's true. Welcome back to Hannity. All right, it's that time of year again. Thousands of young adults, they head to tropical destinations all across the U.S. for a little fun in the sun. But what are your kids really up to when they jet off to spring break? that you usually end up paying for. Now, back in 2015, Ainsley Earhart went down to Panama City Beach, Florida, to investigate the dangers of spring break, and what we found was beyond shocking. But after our reporting aired two years ago, the local government passed a series of ordinances to curtail the risky behavior, including banning all alcohol on the beach in the month of March this year. Well, we sent a producer to another spring break hotspot, this time in South Padre Island in Texas. Look, you gotta be warned here, what you're about to see is beyond graphic, probably not appropriate for your kids. Three, two, one, go. I don't remember the last three days because I've been so up. What time did y'all start drinking today? Uh, one hour ago, but like seven shots in seven minutes, so we're good. <laughs> I do drugs off some girls like like chest. It's pretty that crazy. Was you and me. <laughs>
This is called slap in the bag. <laughs> It's so weird down here. It's so weird you never know what you're gonna get into. We've seen so much twerking, dude. Nine with the twerking. Mom and Dad, I love you. Drinking today, like 11. Drink beer. I honestly have no idea. I really don't know. <laughs> All right, here with Reaction, Fox and Friends co host Ainsley Earhart. Now, you've been down there a number of years for us doing mm -hmm. this. And you saw a lot of bad things. It's obviously yeah. happening still, but not, not in Panama City Beach. Not as much in Panama City Beach. Right. I talked to the new sheriff. There's a new sheriff in town. New sheriff in town. His name is Tommy Ford. Yeah. And uh, Frank McKeithen has been there for years. He retired. And then uh, Tommy Ford took over. So he was elected in the, in the fall and took over in January. So I just got off the phone with him. Mm -hmm. The numbers are not back for, for this year, spring break, because it's still going on. They look at the numbers through the entire month of March, but they have changed change the rules. The big one is no alcohol on the beach there. By the way, we, we are hated for doing hated. that. Kids hate hated us by and the bar kids. owners. But he said loved by the community. He yeah. said his officers will walk out on the on the beach and families come up to them and say thank you so much for cleaning up the beach. We're bringing our families back. He said that's generating the economy again. So they're really pleased with that. He says it's not perfect. They had a really bad day yesterday. He said there were two shootings yesterday. One person's in critical condition and three robberies. But they have banned balcony climbing. Remember when we yeah. were down there, there were people that were jumping from balcony to balcony and then falling off because they were drunk and then dying. Every one of these kids is wasted. They're hammered. They dude. are there to get wasted. That is their goal, to get blacked out wow. drunk. Uh, they've increased the penalties for open containers, no alcohol on the beach in the month of March, no parking lot drinking, and you can't buy any alcohol between see, the hours of 2 and 7 a.m. I, I think one of the great revelations that you made, and I think this is important for parents if they're, if they're paying to send their kids here, is you've got people, they call the 100 miles. 100 mile yeah. group, right? That coming in with homemade drugs, Molly, ecstasy, cocaine, marijuana, obviously, 